Welcome back, everybody, to another episode. I'm Stephen Nathanson, your host, CEO, and founder of Strive for More. Today, we're going to talk about a little bit of a broad topic, organizationally and personally, in terms of personal development. What is it? What does it mean? As I said, it's a very, very broad topic. It can mean a lot of things. Specifically, it relates to our own individual growth. How do we develop ourselves? How do we further our skill set? These are all very, very broad questions. What I found is typically, especially organizationally, we tend to focus on our quote unquote weaknesses. What's wrong? What needs to be fixed? What needs to be, say, coached to develop them? What needs to be essentially worked on as a last resort? Perhaps before we put somebody on a performance improvement plan, right? It's kind of how it goes. That's one of the things that organizations typically do. Can we show that record of we've made these attempts to rehabilitate, if you will, somebody so that we can actually put them on that performance improvement plan or let them go? I think that's one way of looking at it. You know, I note that because a lot of times when we talk about personal development, it's negatively focused. Is focus on what's wrong with me? Where are my weaknesses? But let's flip that script because what is more powerful than developing ourselves because we actually want to grow and get better in an area and something that we see as more positive, something that's more serving to us or something that we're being forced into as something that's wrong with me. It's a weakness, something I have to grow. As you listen, which to you sounds like the more motivating and inspiring route to go. It's what serves us, what's positive. If we look at personal development in a non-serving light of, this is something that is wrong with me, it needs to get fixed, I will beat myself up. I will not give myself compassion or forgiveness and accept that change takes time because I want it to change instantaneously. I may be forced into doing something from an organizational standpoint. Then it's never going to sit well with us because we don't like to be told what to do as human beings, kind of across the board. That's one of the very first things about pers personal development, which is how are we looking at it? Are we looking at it in a way where it's full of serving items that we want to grow in or things that are non-serving in terms of I'm being forced into this? You know, within that, Let's hone in on what those areas are because it's very broad. Let's figure out what it is that we want to do. What do we want to continue to hone even further? What new skills, perhaps, do I want to develop? Where do I want to go with it? It can be very skill-oriented. I would love to work on, say, time management, becoming more efficient with my time, becoming more pro product productive, excuse me, or it could be, I want to work on networking, relationship building, or I want to advance my career. There's a lot of different things that we can focus on. What can help us determine what to do in terms of personal development is what's most important to us. What's the meaning behind it? The impact for it? What are we striving for? What do we ultimately want to get to? If I know that endpoint, that can often reveal what it is that we want to work on to get there. Work, again, it's typically skill-oriented. Time management, productivity, efficiency, written communication, oral communication, presenting in executive presence, right? Those are a lot of managing upwards, if you will. Those are a lot of different things also that we can focus on, skill ones at work. Personal, it's similar, but it can be something like health, athletic pursuits, boundaries, balances, relationships. What do I want that to look like? There's a lot of connection and crossover. When we look at the overall goals, what's underneath all of them, a lot of it comes down to, say, emotional intelligence. It's not just a buzzword, but it's 
about knowing yourself, your own self-awareness, then how well do I quote unquote manage myself? What we've talked a lot about is the difference between reacting and responding on this podcast. The self-awareness is going to let us know how do we maybe naturally react. And that management is going to allow us to know that we react this way, but we don't have to respond in that way. And that is one of the biggest reasons why we actually created grit here at Strive for More. The giving ourselves permission to be human, the recognizing we always have a choice, the implementing small steps, and then the time component of it, because fundamentally, when we give ourselves permission to be who we are, the serving, the non-serving, it becomes easier to embrace that, to accept who we are, and then move past it and recognize that we have the choices to grow and develop. On that, I want to highlight the words serving and non-serving again. One of the reasons why I use those terms instead of positive and negative is because of the inherent connotation they have with us. When we view something as a negative, we typically see it as bad, it shouldn't happen, it's terrible. Why am I this way? It can come with that downward spiral. Something that's non-serving is less detrimental mentally to us. Okay, it's not helpful. What do each of those terms mean to you? Do you see that difference? It's the same thing when we talk about weaknesses. This is a weakness. How does that sit with you? Is it similar to a word negative? What would happen if you characterize it as a growth area instead? Often the terms that we use, not only with other people, but with ourselves, have a huge impact on how we view that term, the mentality around it, and then what nervous system we're activating within our own bodies that can either uplift us or bring us down. So part of grit is talking about the permission we give ourselves to be who we are. Part of it's about how we talk to ourselves, how we recognize that. While we may not have mastered that yet, say the time management that we want, doesn't mean that it's a weakness of ours. It's just something that we've continued continuing to grow and hone further. And we can develop it. We are capable of leveraging our past experiences to grow from it, to learn from it, to get better, to fine tune. When we talk about personal development, grit plays a huge role because of our mentality and our acceptance of ourselves, which can dictate how we view our own personal development. If it's possible, how we characterize it and what nervous system we activate and the areas of focus. We have the choices available to control what we think, how we act and how we feel. That choice is up to us. And what we want to grow and what we want to develop falls right within them. We get to choose what to focus on, how to characterize it, the impact that growing in those areas are going to create for us, which is inherently going to motivate us to take action towards it. You know, I'm less motivated to act on something that's forced upon me and I view as a negative. I am more motivated to act upon something that has intrinsic meaning and value to me and that I see is going to help me get to ultimately where I want to go. Personal development means something different to each of us. But if we use these tricks that we've talked about, we can actually shape it in a way that is much more certain, much more likely to actually cause us to take action because we know the value, we know the impact, and we're inherently motivated to work towards them. It starts with what's up here, how we think about it, how we characterize it. I'll stop there because there's a lot more we can dig into, but it branches into being very personalized. It takes a lot of one-on-one -on -one thought and conversations to help us unearth and then find those specific areas actionable items for each of us. But within the topic today, let's recap. Personal development as a whole is incredibly broad. It can have a lot of different meaning for each of us, but it's all related to our growth and continuing to grow forward in growth areas versus say weaknesses. Today, we focus on that, the serving, the growth areas. Excuse me, 
Today, we focus on the negative, the weaknesses. But if we flip that script, it is much more powerful for the growth areas, the serving, not only for us as individuals, but also as organizations. And the way we characterize it and the culture we have internally that can disengage employees or actually engage them, that's a big part of this too. That's a side yeah. effect. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in some upcoming episodes. So how are we viewing it? What goes into our own personal development? How are we characterizing it? And do we know what's in it for us? There's a lot of different ways we can slice it. Again, it's very personal. But I'll leave you with those questions of how you view it. What's in it for you? What are you striving towards? How do you characterize it? What self-talk comes into play for you? Do you think things are possible? These are all great questions to understand, considering all the areas around which we want to grow. So until the next time, remember, if we never ask, we'll never know. If we never try, we never will. Be the movement in your life. Thank you.